came in as that thing that the bible says walk in the spirit can we begin there on the screen it is interesting that the bible says walk in the spirit so today i want us to look at how to how to you know how do we begin to learn walking in the spirit or how do we if you're in a situation of spiritual slumber how do you wake up because the bible says awake awake O zion and yesterday i said that it is our responsibility to wake up from any situation of spiritual slumber when you're alive you let me know okay the Bible is very clear. The Bible tells us that it is our responsibility to wake up spiritually. So what is the process? How can we wake up spiritually? How can we wake up spiritually and remain awake? In other words, how can we learn to live a Christian life where we are aware? We are spiritually conscious of our environment and not only that, we grow in the awareness of our spiritual environment. That is the most important thing in Christianity. Growing in that awareness. Of course, I won't say it's the most important because love is lived by the spirit. And you'll not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Can I please get the New King James Version? I say then, walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Come on, somebody say, walk in the spirit. Come on, somebody say, walk in the spirit. He says, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. Now, it is interesting that the Bible speaks of two natures. There are two dimensions. Yesterday, I talked about being asleep and being awake. Yeah? Today, I'll define it as walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. Walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. For us to be watchmen, for us to be prayerful witnesses, we must learn to walk in the spirit. We must learn to walk in the spirit. And uh, how do we begin to walk in the spirit? I think that's, that, that is the, what I'm trying to describe here. How we begin to walk in the spirit. Because the person who is in spiritual slumber, though he is a believer, though he can say he loves God, but as long as he's in spiritual slumber, he is a carnal man. He is walking by the human nature. He is not awake to the things of the spirit. He is living his life after the human nature. He does things according to his physical senses. He lives after the physical man. He makes decision based on the outward appearance. He makes decision based on that which he can see with his eyes or that, or, or, or that which he wants with his desires. He makes decisions based on that which he can see. And as long as we are there, we cannot be watchmen. We cannot be watchmen. We cannot be watchmen. We cannot watch and pray. So how do we begin to awaken and to walk in the spirit? The first key is the key of knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge of the truth. Knowledge of the truth. Knowledge of the truth. Born as if you son. Praise the Lord. We had already dealt with fasting, but I'll mention it last because there are basically three, there are three keys or three principles that ignite you to be into awakening. There are three principles that ignite you into awakening. The first key is the knowledge of the truth. Knowledge of the truth. Now, can you please give me, um, kindly let's go to the book of First Timothy. We look at a number of scriptures today. First Timothy chapter number two, verse number three. First Timothy chapter number two, verse number three. What does it say? For this is 
good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Uh -huh. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So being saved is not enough. Being saved is not enough. You have to come to the knowledge of the truth. Being saved is not enough. <laughs> you have to come to the knowledge of the truth. There is a place in God called truth. There is a place in God called truth. And the beginning of the journey of walking. Remember, to walk is an action, yeah? Walking is an action. So when God says walk in the spirit, there is an action. You, you have to be, in other words, things, be active in the spirit. Be active in the spirit. Be active in the spirit. The first step of awakening is the knowledge of the truth. You have to pattern your life based on the knowledge of the truth. Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Free from what? Free from the human nature. Free from the human nature. So you have to... I'm looking for how to describe this best. When you're, when you're dealing with the knowledge of the truth, there is truth that God wants you to live by. There is truth that God wants us to live by. And as long as we are walking by the, by the truth of the human nature or the truth that is in the physical, that is a limited truth. Because what is in the spiritual is what defines what is in the natural. So as long as we are walking based on the truth, but that truth is physical truth, truth that is based on what we can only see and touch, truth that is based on what our senses is telling us, then we are not walking in the whole truth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Buona si fie san. <clears throat> and so to activate that process of walking in the spirit knowledge of the truth is number one now knowledge of the truth of what knowledge of the truth regarding who God is and knowledge of the truth regarding who you are truth regarding who God is and truth regarding who you are these are the things when we are in a season of prayer and fasting. These are the things that you need to renew your mind with. You know, let me, give, let me let you know why this is so important. There are people who normally have spiritual dreams. They have dreams. When they go at night, they have dreams. But these dreams end up, they are, they, the dreams are actually revelations concerning something that is wrong or something that needs to be addressed. But that thing that they see ends up scaring them and ends up affecting them negatively. What is the problem? They saw the truth, but they didn't have another truth to cancel that other truth. <laughs> I don't know if somebody is understanding me today. Or, for example, there are people who go through things in life and these things make them... Uh, these things that they are going through, they are real things, but these things somehow makes them... affects their relationship with God and affects their work with God. What is the problem? What They did not have enough truth to overcome what they were going through. They didn't have sufficient truth to overcome what they were going through. The challenges they were going through. The truth that they had was not enough to make them overcome the challenge that they were facing. And so they, they stopped a life of prayer. They stopped a life of being in the word. 
because the, the thing that was challenging them, the truth that was challenging them, overcame them because it found them with insufficient truth. I don't know if somebody is listening to me today. I'm trying to describe this properly. Yeah? There are trials that we may go through in the family. There are trials we may go through in our workplace. There are trials we may go through in our careers or in our businesses. But if the covenant, the truth concerning who God is and the truth concerning who you are is not your firm foundation, then you shall be overcome. Are you understanding me? So you must make sure that you are grounded in the knowledge of their truth. There are people who begin zealously with zeal in their work with God. But you find that the enemy is able to overpower them and, re and put them and silence them and put them into spiritual weakness or put them into depression and oppression. Why? Because when the enemy came, the enemy did not find them strong in truth. They did not know who they are in Christ. And they did not know the faith, I mean, who God says he is. And so because they don't know who they say, who God says he is, and they don't really know who God says they are, they are weak. They are unable to overcome the trial and the challenge. So the knowledge of the truth, you have to have a firm, you have to have a firm foundation in who you are in Christ and who God says he is. That is the first way. That is the first pillar of awakening. It's the pillar. It's the pillar. That is why I have found especially among intercessors. You find someone is, in, is an intercessor but they have so much challenges. They have so much fire around them. Not spiritual fire. I mean, they have so much contrary fire, oppression and opposition until the intercession that they had, the altar, the, 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 the altar of prayer that they had becomes silenced by the trials and the challenges of the enemy. Even though they were diligent in prayer, they didn't have a firm foundation of who they are. So when the wind came and when the storm came, they were on sandy ground. They sank. And this is why it is common to find that intercessors have a lot of battles. Not because intercessors are... Uh, not because battles are kept for intercessors, you know. <laughs> but because most intercessors are not well grounded in the word of righteousness. They are not well grounded in who God says they are. So they have battle after battle. And they say, don't worry. These are battles of intercession. There are no battles of intercession. Those things are not there. What we have is a devil who is moving around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So if he's a roaring lion and he doesn't find the lion of Judah in you, he doesn't find the lion of Judah roaring also in you. If he, if he doesn't find the roar in you greater than his own roar, then he'll intimidate you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, it is important that especially if God has called you to be a watchman. God has called all of us. I showed you the verse. All Christians are called to be watchmen. Everybody. I showed you. Jesus said, what I say to you, I say to all. Watch. So all believers are called to be watchmen. And so people begin the journey of intercession with burden. Praying for the nation. Praying for their households. Praying for their families. Praying for their workplace. They begin with burden. And then when the enemy arises. To attack. He finds they don't have the armor of the word. They don't have the armor of light. The scriptures talks about the armor of light. And the word of God is the light. So when the armor of light is not there. 
you find that the enemy can just have his way. So someone is praying, but the enemy is also having his way. Why? Because they are not grounded in the word of God. The word is not their authority. They are not so rooted in the word that the word becomes their authority. Praise God. So the knowledge of the truth, your circumstances cannot be your truth. Come on somebody. Your circumstances cannot be your truth. What the devil is doing against you cannot be your truth. Whatever the enemy is doing in your family is not your truth. It's not your truth. The word of God is your truth. If God says you are more than a conqueror, you must know, you must come to the knowledge of that truth. You must come to the knowledge where you know, 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 that 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 you're more than a conqueror. Any warfare, anytime the enemy comes against you, what the enemy is coming to check is the word. What the devil is afraid of is the word. For as long as Jesus said it is written, Satan could do nothing. <laughs> Because Jesus had the knowledge of the truth. The devil came and tried another one. He said, it is written. Why? He had the knowledge of the truth. The devil came and tried another one. He said, it is written. He knew inside him. He had the knowledge. You, the word of, you have to be rooted, especially if you are in a prayer movement. Prayer movement is not about prayer. Prayer movement is about authority. As releasing words from a place of authority. Rooted and grounded in the word. If you are not rooted and grounded in the word, I'm telling you. The enemy will be trying this one. And you're saying, oh, pray for me people. Pray for us. Yes, even Paul said pray for us. It is true. You should pray for us. But there is, there is me saying pray for us when I'm in a place of confidence. And there is me, me saying pray for us when I'm in a place of defeat. I'm telling you. Whatever happens, the word of God is final. Your circumstances is not your truth. The word of God is your truth. Your opposition is not your truth. The word of God is your truth. Your, let me tell you, your challenge is not your truth. Your struggle is not your truth. <laughs> Hello, somebody. The word of God is your truth. So the first thing in awakening, before we can even talk about seeing, we can't even talk about visions and what, this is the first thing, the knowledge of the truth. Must be your reality. Buenas if you son. Praise the Lord. If not, you'll become these people. You know, sometimes I wonder, I mean, listen, and I'm saying this in love, you can't always be a pray for me Christian. I mean, I, 20, 1995, pray for me Christian. 1998, pray for me Christian. 2002, pray for me Christian. 2014, I mean, come on. You have to grow. I'm not saying asking for prayer is wrong, but there is just a certain way we come for, to be prayed for in defeat. We are in a state of defeat. Not for agreement. You know, I can come that I feel this thing is turning in my favor. 
pray for me. But I can come. I just feel I'm hopeless and I'm finished. Pray for me. <laughs> we have to come to the knowledge of the truth. But it will take work. It will take work. It will take work. Listen, open for me. Open for me. Um, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me show you something. Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter number two. Second Timothy two. I mean, you can't always be whining, grumbling, complaining. I mean, for how long? This wilderness, for how long? For how long? This life of being in the will, where we are not seeing promises fulfilled. For how long? You have to get tired. I mean, how, can you imagine that? Can you imagine? Just imagine this. Imagine someone is in a prison cell. Yeah? And they have the keys of the prison inside. And they are just refusing to use the keys to open. They are refusing. Just to take the keys to open the cell and to walk out like this and to go. So they are just there in the prison. Every day. <laughs> the keys are there. <laughs> Jesus said, I've given you the keys of the key. Keys are there. But someone is just in the prison with the keys. Come on, somebody. I want you to refuse this thing. It's a very sad thing. It's really a bad thing. It's, it's sense, actually, it is senseless. It doesn't make sense. Hmm. Listen. Second Timothy, are you there? Second Timothy 2 from verse number 23. Verse number 23. Verse number 23. Let me show you something. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. Uh -huh. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, uh -huh. in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. Now wait, give me King James. King James. King James. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. They are doing what? So, they are Christians who oppose themselves. They, <laughs> they are busy saying, I bind, I remove, I destroy, I scatter, I, I, I undertake, I overtake. But they are opposing They are their own enemy. Listen. If God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. <laughs> so, how are they opposing themselves? They are not acknowledging the truth. They are acknowledging what they are seeing with their eyes. They are acknowledging their circumstance. They are acknowledging what their circumstance. They are acknowledging their problem. They are acknowledging their situation. They are not acknowledging the truth. So they are opposing themselves. <laughs> so Paul is saying, this kind of people, may God give them repentance. What is repentance? Change of mind. Repentance is change. Repentance is not just saying, I'm sorry. Yes. It is good to say, I'm sorry. To tell God, Lord, I am sorry. But change your mind. Come to the knowledge of the truth. This culture of acknowledging Goliath, acknowledging the giants, you cannot inherit the promise. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. 
Acknowledging Goliath. Acknowledging Goliath's brother. Acknowledging Goliath's cousins. Acknowledging the giants. You're just acknowledging pastor. This week it is this pastor. Next week it is this pastor. Tomorrow, just acknowledging giant, giant, giant. Listen, come to the knowledge of the truth. Let me show you. Next verse. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who, who are taken captive by him at his will. <laughs> Can you imagine? Because this guy is not acknowledging the truth. The devil can just come, collect him, Make him a captive. And when the devil wishes, when the devil wants, say, ah, today I feel like attacking this one. He just comes, he collects him, puts him in a prison. At the devil's own will. And he's a Christian. Why? He has refused to acknowledge the truth. <laughs> and, and so, and so, Paul says, if, a book go to the previous verse, go to 25. 25. In meekness, instructing those who oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, uh -huh, and that they may recover themselves. So this guy, when he starts to say what God is saying concerning him, when he, be, when he starts to say what God... I am who God says I am. He begins to quote those scriptures. He begins to speak them. He begins to declare them. He begins to acknowledge them. What happens? He's recovering himself out of the snare of the devil. You can deliver yourself anytime. You can come out anytime you want. <laughs> when you want, when you, just, when you just say, I want to come out. Just take the truth and begin to acknowledge, 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 acknowledge. What are you doing? You are awakening. You are awakening to the reality that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Now, go to the previous verse. I'll show you something. 25 again. 25 again. If God, if, sorry, if God peradventure will grant them repentance okay sorry it's in 26 sorry sorry 26 26 that they may recover themselves now that word recover themselves recover recover themselves it is the it, the original translation in greek it actually means come, somebody coming out of a drunken stupor Like, like the guy was drunk. So because he was drunk, he was misbehaving. But now because he's been acknowledging the truth, it's like he's becoming sober. Coming back to his mind. <laughs> In other words, spiritual slumber is like, some, according to God, somebody who's walking in the flesh is like a drunk person. It's like this person is he's, he's behaving abnormally. These times when you're complaining, grumbling, murmuring, mama, 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 it's drunkness. It's time for you to recover yourself by acknowledging the truth. It's time for you to recover yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen, knowledge of the truth is the most important pillar after someone gets born again. Knowledge of the truth. Without the knowledge of the truth, somebody will not change. They always will. They, 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 it's not possible to change. You cannot change. How can you change? How can you change? You can't move from the human nature to the divine nature. You can't shift. You can't change your sight. Because you can't see God. You see Goliath. That was the difference between Israel and David. Israel 
what he saw when he saw Goliath. He saw this man. He called him uncircumcised Philistine. He, he saw a man without a covenant. When he saw the enemy, he saw this is an enemy with no covenant. He can't overcome me. He acknowledged the truth. Somebody say knowledge. Somebody say knowledge of the truth. Come on, somebody say knowledge of the truth. Now. Now. So that first pillar. Knowledge of the truth. Open the book of Philemon. Philemon 1, verse number 4. I want to show you something. How powerful knowledge of the truth is in awakening. Knowledge of the truth is your strength. That is why in Isaiah it says, Awake, awake, all Zion. Put on your strength. Put on your beautiful garments. Knowledge of the truth is your, be is your beautiful garment. Knowledge of the truth is your strength. Without the knowledge of the truth, there is no way you can be, a, you can be in the army of God. You can't be in the army of God. Verse number four. Verse number four. We'll read from four to six. Verse number four, it says, I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you. <laughs> in Christ Jesus. Let me explain for you that verse. <laughs> That word communication is the word koinonia. Most, most of you now know what koinonia. You know, you know the word koinonia, yeah? You know koinonia. So this word communication is the word koinonia in Greek. Koinonia, the meaning of koinonia, koinonia means part, a participation that leads to oneness. Participation that leads to communion. Participation that leads to oneness. Participation that leads to oneness. Participation that leads to oneness. That's the meaning of the word koinonia. It leads, it's, it's two people participating until they become one. Communion. Are we together? So he says... That the communication of your faith may become effectual. So, in other words, he's saying, if you want your faith to become effective, your faith needs to be the kind of faith that, is, that brings in participation. The kind of faith that makes you participate with the word of God. That the communication, that the koinonia of your faith may become effectual. How? By acknowledging every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. If your faith will be effectual, you have to have the habit of acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. Effective faith. Effective faith. <laughs> that the koinonia of your faith may become effectual. In other words, it's a kind of faith that takes you and every good thing that is in you and makes you become one with every good thing that is in you. When people look at you, every good thing that is in you is now manifested. Because you have activated it by acknowledging it. Ah, this afternoon. I think I'm speaking to the people online. If you're online, can you type amen? I think I'm talking to those people online. Can you type amen? Can you type amen? <laughs> this, you need to catch this. This is the key of awakening through knowledge. Awakening through knowledge. Awaken, the first awakening is awakening through the knowledge of the truth. So you take the knowledge of the truth and you begin here by acknowledging every good thing which is in you. 
you take your pen and your paper and you go through the word of God and you put down what the word says is in you. Hey, come on somebody. What the word says is in you. It was Smith Wingleswath. Every morning when he woke up, hey, it was a drama. When he woke up, it was a drama. He could kick his blanket and jump and begin to run in his bedroom shouting the word. Speaking what the word says about him. Speaking, 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 speaking. He was creating an environment for his day. <laughs> Some people, they wake up the blank, even just the blanket is heavy. This is not the blanket is heavy. The blanket of depression is on top of the blanket, so it's heavy. And you have the keys to remove that blanket of depression. You have the keys. You have the keys. The purpose for when you don't just study the Bible haphazardly. Begin with this thing. Acknowledging. Have your Bible side differently. Put down verses of every good thing that is in you. That one is for the purposes of confession during prayer. And then also, you can read now the stories, the storylines of the Bible for the purpose of learning lessons. But this is what makes you strong. Otherwise, you'll be, you'll be waking up and the first thing you are talking about is the negative dream you had. Instead of acknowledging every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Hmm. I'm about to be done. I'm about to be done. I'm about to be done. And so, the pillar of knowledge is number one. Knowledge of the truth. And how do you handle this knowledge? By acknowledging, acknowledging every good thing that is in you until it becomes your environment. Your environment. Words can create environments. That is why when you, when you sit down with somebody and begin to talk about every negative thing that you are going through, if that person doesn't have wisdom, they could end up catching your own environment. I'm not saying we don't, we, I'm not saying people should not go through things. In this world, Jesus said you shall have many troubles. But he said, but cheer up. Because I have overcome, I have overcome the world. So in spite of the troubles and challenges we have, we must acknowledge every good thing. 